Welcome to CSUN. CSUN stands for Southeast Asian American Sons. This is the show for exploring the experiences of Southeast Asian Americans through the lens of two Southeast Asian American sons. My name is Yang Lor and my co host is. Hey, my name is Jason, your Kamae son. <laughs> All right, Jason, this、um, is the last episode in this very first season of our podcast. So I'm glad we've made it this far.、Mm-hmm. Um, and so this is the show to conclude what we've、uh, talked about for the first season. But before we move on, To a recap of the different episode, let's do a quick check in.、Um, how's life been for you for the past、uh, couple of weeks since our last episode? Well, glad you asked because it's been a whirlwind and I'll be moving across the world actually. So I got a job in China and I'll be moving there next week. So by the time you listen to this, I might already be over in a different time zone.、Uh, it was a big process、um, getting everything ready to go. Because first it was just all the paperwork. It took, I looked at the date. It was about、uh, November, or no,、uh, February earlier this year, all the way till now. So it took nearly 12, nearly 12, the whole year to get <laughs> hired. In any case, the past month, I've just been packing, moving, storing, sorting, arranging, integrating, <laughs> unpacking, and then packing again to go. So it's, I, I actually got a week、uh, of a break just because、uh, they work understood that we have a holiday coming up. So happy about that. And we got to squeeze in this episode. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> How about you?、Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm doing pretty good as well.、Uh, courses just concluded for me at UC Merced.、Um, so I finished grading this past Tuesday. So I am officially on winter break, but I have a final paper to complete to submit. Uh, and this paper, as I was talking to you about, about it to you earlier,、uh, it, it's、uh, quite relevant to our podcast. I'm、um, analyzing data for Hmong Americans,、um, looking at their educational completion rates、uh, for 2020, but also the past、uh, several decades as well. So I'm hoping、uh, after I finish this article, maybe I might be able to look at the、um, educational completion rates for other Southeast Asian Americans as well. And that, may, that might be a topic for a future conversation. Sounds like you'll also be able to add on to、uh, other studies in the future. Yes, hopefully.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So let's shift on over to a quick recap of our episode.、Um, throughout this first season, we've recorded one, two, three, four, five, six,、uh, six substantive episodes focusing on the experiences of、um, a different Southeast Asian American group s、uh, each episode. Um, and so I'll talk about briefly you know, the first three episodes, and then Jason, you can let us know what the last three episodes were about.、Mm-hmm. Um, so, our very first episode was based on this book entitled The Late Homecomer by Cal Kalia Yang.、Uh, and it's about the experiences of Hmong Americans, the refugee experience,、uh, leaving Laos and then eventually resettling in the, in, in the United States. Our second episode was based on the film AKA Don Bonus. Uh, it's about the Cambodian American refugee experience,、um, Cambodian Americans、uh, living in the Bay Area. And then our third episode was actually a book, and it's entitled、uh, Ethnic Origins The Adaptations of Hmong and Cambodians in Four Large Cities by Jeremy Hine. And so we got a chance to really talk about, you know, you're Cambodian American, I am Hmong American. So we got a chance to really Think about our own experiences and compare across、uh, each of our, our, our groups. And so those were the first three episodes.、Um, how about the last three episodes, Jason? Yeah, the fourth episode was Betrayal. It was a documentary about Lao American refugees who settled in the New York area. Then after that, we, episode five was Death of a Shaman, where we learned more about the Mian group based in Laos and Thailand and Learned a little bit more about the cultural experiences about shamanism as well as it pertains to the group. And then our last episode is Saigon, USA. It is about the Vietnamese American experience along with the immigrant and refugee groups that settled in Orange County area. So popularly known as Little Saigon. So those are the、uh, six different episodes and what they cover. So if you have not I've been following us、uh, this first season. Feel free to go by,、uh, you know,、um, check us out. And,、um, you know, if you want to start from the very beginning, that's perfectly fine as well.、Um, if you want to focus on a specific group, we have、uh, different episodes for the different groups. So, for this first season, we watch a lot of films, and I think we only have 
uh, a couple of books. And so the question for us uh, is to think about, is there a format that, that you prefer, Jason, uh, for learning about the experiences of Southeast Asian Americans? Uh, we have books and we have videos. Uh, what do you prefer? Or you know, does each uh, format provides its own uh, value to the conversation? I believe books are more informative. They have a lot of information. It's just that they're a little bit esoteric. So maybe as a scholar or academic, they provide the most enjoyment <laughs> as far as what I think we're trying to do and uh, the audiences we're reaching. It's a little bit mm -hmm. more about infotainment. So I think that's where like documentaries mm -hmm. and film video format, we're really visual people. So I think, you know, seeing and hearing uh, people and media is very sensual. So that allows us to engage with the content a little more. Whereas books, it's just, it's very intellectual. Uh, mm -hmm. I like books. I like reading. I read a lot, but it's just, I, it's a little tough to do a show based on books if it takes a certain amount of time and you kind of want to break it down. Whereas a movie, it's a certain length and then you can really just break it down a little easier. So for me, it's movies and also it's just my background too. Yeah, I think just the amount of time it takes to get through a book is much longer. And then to also analyze the book, um, it takes, it's a different approach. And, and so I definitely agree with that. I think films are much more easier to discuss because uh, dissecting it doesn't require you to overanalyze you identify what aspect of it really appeals to you. And that's a very subjective, I think a su very su subjective exercise. Um, you know, I think as an academic, uh, I'm always thinking about how do we analyze the um, experiences of Southeast Asian Americans. And so I, I also think about the different values. And I, I totally agree with you about um, just what films provide. Um, it really enables you to see and feel uh, what these groups are going through um, during their process of adjusting to life in America. I think for me, even um, even amongst books, there's different types of books. So in our first season, we read a, the, the late Homecomer, which is a personal me memoir. And so uh, it's, it's really about the experiences of one specific group um, here and there it, in a history. Some aspects of history are sprinkled into uh, the book, but it's really an intimate uh, portrayal of a specific family. Uh, and then the second book we read was, I would say, very academic. This mm -hmm. is a book that is written by a professor that conducted research on um, the experiences of Hmong and Cambodian Americans. And so that I actually prefer more because it's really about analyzing and comparison. Um, I think for me, when you try to understand even like Southeast Asian Americans, um, it's great to like learn about the specific experiences, but it's also great to put into perspective or into context um, how, how their experiences are similar to, uh, or, or from other refugee groups, but also other groups in America as well. And so I think for me, just as an academic, I al always think about, you know, um, comparison and putting things into context. And I just feel like academic books sometimes do that much better. But I, I, as you mentioned, it's a much more of a intellectual, um, exercise. And so it's not going to appeal to, to everyone. I will say though, because we do the reading, uh, you don't have to. So what that <laughs> means is a lot of times then we're not just going to watch the film as any, uh, let's say lay person or, you know, typical audience. Uh, what mm -hmm. it really means is we're looking at it from a certain viewpoint based on a lot of different things we either experience ourselves or mm -hmm. from the content we've absorbed over the years. Mm -hmm. So I hope then, uh, that would be the value of this show that mm -hmm. is being able to discuss the, the content of a piece, but with a larger uh, frame of reference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we're not saying, you know, this is the go-to episode for learning about Southeast Asian Americans. I think there are plenty of shows and uh, podcasts out there. Um, and we do encourage folks to check out these different uh, podcasts as well. I think for us, you know, what, what makes us unique is that we are two Southeast Asian um, American sons. And so um, there are specific things given our experiences that we find meaningful from these films and videos. Um, if you go to a different uh, show and it's comprised of different, uh, different identities, then you might uh, get different takes from them. But um, I think it's great to get a diverse set of voices about the experiences of Southeast Asian Americans um, because our communities are diverse, even though they have a lot of shared experiences. And I think we're contributing to that. And hopefully, um, any of you listening out there, you also find it within yourself, you know, you have valuable things to share. And so we hope to 
uh, I mean, check out if you have any shows or episodes about your own experiences or on the topic of Southeast Asian Americans. We hope to see more of these because the more voices we have, the more representative these shows and podcasts become. Sounds great. All right. So let's now move on to our favorite episode. We've um, recorded six uh, episodes this uh, first season. Um, you do you have a favorite episode or which one would you recommend if you if you only had to choose one and because of that we might prefer uh, one specific episode over the rest and so um, what do you think Jason yeah it, this is perfectly fitting for end of the year because you always get end of the year countdowns mm -hmm. and instead of a countdown we'll just do our favorite <laughs> just because um, I think it'll just be easier that way so for me uh, well I believe my favorite episode is the betrayal. It's the Lao American refugee experience. I like that film for many reasons. I actually learned about it because of the director, aka cinematographer. She did a Sundance collab uh, talk. And then um, I she then she talked she talked about doing this film, and I never heard of it. So mm. I checked it out, and I enjoyed it because of the process. They did over a decade long video or documentation and it kept changing. And if you ever work on a project, you want to like, if you work on a script, you want to know what the ending is. But in this case, they, it, they had a initial ending and then it changed because of different information. So that was like the most interesting aspect from a filmmaking side. But as far as like the story and the Southeast Asian side, I think you do get a lot of different contexts from the different characters or subjects of the film. So you see and hear about the refugees that came to America, but then you hear about the father who was part of the American side during the fight. So that actually brings a different perspective that you don't typically see from a more maybe bias kind of documentary. So I think this allows a more natural storytelling and a little bit more context and informative so i think overall it's just a good piece uh, i enjoyed the film in that regard i think uh, our summary of it gives there was a lot i think it was might have been our longest episode because when i was editing it i'm just like there's a lot to get through here but uh, <laughs> it was it was good i liked it i think my favorite episode would be um our latest episode um episode six about the uh, experiences of Vietnamese American and I say that not necessarily because of the film or the content of the film but I say that because of the content of our conversation I think sometimes when we do podcasts for our previous episode there's a lot of summary and providing context or just sharing our thoughts about those experiences and if it's new to us or we've heard about these groups I think for Saigon USA what I appreciate about the episode was that we each had kind of a critical perspective about uh, about the film uh, it's less about the film than perhaps based on what we expected uh, given the trailer for the film um, and so i think we both found that there are um, many aspects that weren't fully interrogated and we wish um, it could interrogate some of these topics uh, in the film and so um, i feel like saigon usa was where we i had a very lively conversation with you about um, you know what did we take away from the film what was missing uh, and so I, I think that's what I that, that has to be my uh, my favorite episode, um, just based on the conversation that we had. Well, I think that was great. Now people know what to expect when they watch or at least get a initial episode to see if they want to continue checking out different episodes or even the groups. So I think next, you know, it's the end of the year. So we want to know where we want to go and what do we want to do uh i want to announce that we'll continue doing this work so even in 2024 we still don't know of course how things will turn out year after year but as far as this project it's more than just a experiment <laughs> we do want to do this continually and we'll play with different formats so what we've been doing this year was just reviewing different groups and then viewing content and then having a discussion about it i think moving forward we're going to move into a little more of a discussion style so you'll we have something in store for you hope you like it it's a little more conversational it's a little more updated kind of topics so current events things that stand out so yeah look forward to that 
Yeah, I, I think, you know, this is our first episode we made, uh, first season, we made it through a uh, six episode. It's a learning experience. Yeah. Um, you're learning how to do podcasts. So we definitely, there's a lot of things um, for us to learn. And so I think the, the hope is that as we do more and more of these, we, we are able to get better at this craft. Uh, this podcast, you know, came out of our ongoing conversations we've been having for the past year or two um, on just the experiences of, of Southeast Asian Americans. So we decided why not also make these conversations public? And I think the shift from, uh, you know, personal intimate conversations about Southeast Asians to now much more public conversation, um, you know, it, it, it's a different vibe. I guess the last thing I want to note is that uh, I might even have a different perspective being in Asia, just because mm. I, I describe it as being Asian American Asian. <laughs> so <laughs> it'll be like... I don't know what that even really means sometimes because it's a person out of Asia raised in America by going back. So we'll see. I don't know if you'll get mm -hmm. a, uh, if I'll get a different perspective immediately or something will grow on me or it'll change in some way. Yeah. I think that's the great thing is that our experiences are not static. Um, as we go through life, we experience different things and that influences our perspectives, but also what we find meaningful and so the hope is that wherever you go um you gain valuable inf information insights into who you are as a, as a person a person of color a, a asian american or southeast asian american we have so many identities and different places different aspects of our identity are much more uh, visible and so we can definitely use that as sources for conversation in the future Great. Any last notes, Yang, about just how things went or what stands out the most to you during doing all this? Yeah, I think it was a good experience. Um, you know, even as a as a professor, I teach in the classroom, and so it's 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 it, it's a, it's difficult now to you know make our conversations public. Um, so I feel like that's that's a big transition for me, knowing that there might be people that listen to what we say or or do. I mean, definitely uh, puts pressure. Um, it puts more responsibility because you have to, you're not just talking amongst yourself, but you're talking to people and people might interpret it a particular way. It carries more weight. Um, so I think just trying to find the right balance, but I'm excited. You know, I think it's, um, you know, you always have to put yourself out there for, for anything. And this is part of that, um, growth, personal growth. Uh, you know, I have a, a career, you, um, you have a career. And so sometimes our careers take over. Uh, who we are as, as a person, uh, our interests beyond our career. Uh, and it's, it's a little bit intimidating to try something new, but this is part of the process of trying, failing, and then relearning. But um, the whole point is that you're making progress. You're experiencing uh, personal growth uh, throughout these uh, different moments. Great. So the biggest thing I had doing all this was I, I work in AV and media, but doing all this was just way more work than uh, you might expect. So anyone who's starting their own show, definitely put in the time. Uh, it takes time, but it's definitely worth it. I think it's rewarding being able to create content that will live forever. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be out there. And hopefully you enjoy it as well through, throughout the process. Mm -hmm. I'd be remiss if we didn't do a seasoning of our experience so given mm -hmm. your overall experience what is your seasoning of your experience doing this show yeah i would say it would be between um savory so savory we mentioned as a flavor that is uh, nourishing uh it's inspiring it's balanced i definitely feel that that taste um now that we've concluded the first season is uh, it's been great to have these conversation you know, it's hard because you're recording, you have these conversations and you don't really know who's listening to it. Um, but I feel like even when people, even if it's not meaningful to people, the fact that this gives me time to interact with you personally, but also intellectually, um, it's really nourishing uh, to me. Uh, and also like there's also sweetness as well. Um, you know, we have conversation and it's not overly serious. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it makes it... Um, much better you know you're talking about some serious topic but we're able to um you know not get too serious and so we have some fun in the process as well my seasoning is peppermint <laughs> and the reason why is because it's a, an awakening into a sense to refresh your perspectives on different ideas you may have had or don't have so that way uh now it's something that you're aware of so there you go 
Okay, everyone, that's the end of our first season. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate your support. Look forward to season two. And it is the end of the year. So happy holidays. Yep, happy holidays. Happy New Year. Thank you to those of you who've been listening to our podcast. Um, and we look forward to having you along for this ride for uh, many more years in the future. Okay, so for the last time in 2023, see you next time.